Now at this point, we've gone over the file and the project as a whole. We've gone over the world, the level itself. We've gone through the subsequences and seen how to mess with level sequences, adjust shots independently, and adjust the camera rigs. Also, very importantly, we've seen how to make different viewport layouts so we can actually see our camera and our workspace in a perspective window at the same time. In this video, we're gonna focus on the characters. We're going to kind of break free of the regular cinematic that we've been looking at because we're gonna spend more time in here. But now we wanna look specifically at our characters. Let's take a look at beta. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna close out of my sequencer. And in fact, we don't even need to stay in this level. We can if we want to. I'll go ahead and switch this back to a perspective full view. We could just drop beta here into the world, or we can do this, control N, in just a basic level. Both work. I'll show you each. To take a look at our character, I'm going to just control spacebar, jump back to content, assets, characters, and we'll look at the beta character. Now he's got uh, his materials all laid out in here. He's got different texture files, so if you wanted to mess with those, you could. But we want to look in the rigs. We have the actual skeletal mesh here, this purple one which if I can double click, you'll see the actual character asset hanging out in his more or less an A pose, right? Now he looks a little sad by default. That's just his base pose. And he's sad because you haven't animated him yet. Let's fix that. Let's put a smile on that face. Uh, we can take a look at all the different skeletal editing, skinning, def deformations, blah, blah, blah. We're not gonna do any of that here. Um, we're not going to mess with the asset as a whole, but what I do want to show you is the actual control rig that they've created over at Agora for this character. So a couple things. He has a modular rig and a control rig. If I double click on the control rig corrective asset, we can go ahead and see, you know, what's in here. We have underneath the forward solve a few different things that are happening. Now, I'm not going to sit here and explain this to you. I'm not going to pretend that I fully understand any of it either, because I don't. Uh, but you can see that there are these different things that happen in the uh, evaluation evaluation of the rig. This is some of the extra stuff in their testing that as you are posing the character, this keeps him on model. It keeps things working nicely. Cool. Sure. You know, great. Let's, let's give it a round of applause and let's move on and never look at it again. If you want to, obviously you can dig in there and, you know, reverse engineer the stuff. But we're going to take a look at the modular rig, beta's control rig. So if I jump in here, one of the cool things about this, I'll go ahead and maximize this window so we can see it a little bit, is we can see the rig kind of ready to go. Now, there's a lot going on. If you've never seen the modular rig editor before, it's a really handy way to be able to build your own rigs inside of Unreal using modules, these modular rig components that you drop onto sockets. Now, I'm not covering that in these videos. That's something that you know, if you want to see more of that, you can go to my YouTube channel or join one of my courses or something. But here, we're just going to take a look at these characters and how they were created with Agora. They have a bunch of different and custom modules all throughout here that you'll see them that these aren't normally here, like finger, foot, hind leg. These are, these ship with Unreal. There's all kinds of cool stuff in here. But obviously there's a bunch of specific things to these Agora characters. They created a bunch of custom modules to rig these characters and technically you could reuse them on other characters if the naming conventions and things like that were to uh, align nicely. But this is one of the ways that you can take some rigging R&D that you've you know put some time into figuring out how to rig a character. And if you have a collection of characters that have similar naming conventions, a, a structure through which that you kind of set up how the bones and things like that are gonna work, you can use these modules on multiple characters, which allows you to then update the modules, which updates all the rigs. You can still do custom stuff on top of that, but it's a really smart system so that you can have sort of a, a consistency across multiple characters. Now, anyways, you could come in here and, you know, grab these things and move them around and see what it's going to do. We don't need to do that here in this window. I just want to show you that this is where the rigging is done. So if you needed to make an adjustment to these characters, if you wanted to change the size of the controls or how they work or rotation orders or something. Like if you want to get in there, this is where you go. So for example, I could go to the left clavicle control. I could come over here to the right, click on shape, drop this down. I'll lock the scale and I'll make this like bigger for some reason. Now I can have a giant left clavicle control, I guess. I don't know. 
I'll go ahead and undo that. But my point is, if you needed to make rig changes or you want to dig into how the rigs were created, this is where you can come to kind of, you know, play around and tweak some stuff. But enough about that. Let's actually play with the character and let's do a tour of the rig itself. Now, if I just take the modular rig asset and I drop that specifically into my, um, into my viewport, it's going to automatically just create a, a level sequence with the character already in here with the modular rig ready to go. That's a quick little shortcut to just pop the character in and this will work great for testing them out. Now, if I already had had a level sequence open and I dropped this in, it would have added it to the existing level sequence. But because I didn't have one open, I had just closed out of all those level sequences and everything else, it has created me one right here. So I now have a sequencer with a beta control rig take one level sequence that's been generated for me. I didn't do any of that. That's just kind of what happens because you must have a level sequence open to be able to see the control rig. Now from here, we can just play with the character. I'm gonna close this levels panel that I've had open since some of the earlier things I was showing you. And I'm going to focus, get rid of animation layers and just kind of adjust this a little bit. Here's a quick tour. Over in the anim outliner, because this character was made using the modular rigging system, it gives us this really great sort of hierarchy view of things in the top stack, in the spine, clavicle, arm. We have the separation because of the modules. Any control that I select, like the head control, for example, we're going to see our anim details down here, which is our channel box, essentially. But before I start messing with anything, one of the best things to do anytime you bring in a new character for the first time is go to your first frame or somewhere, you know, I typically default to the first frame, go into your level sequence here, find the control rig track and hit this button, set a new key on everything. This will key every control in the entire rig, which is a really, really good first step to do. Obviously, I also have auto key turned on, which I would highly recommend. And now that I have a key set on everything, certain rig logic is now primed to work properly. Things like IKFK snapping, a lot of those kinds of things inside of Unreal, they expect you to have a keyframe somewhere so it knows to look for changes. That way, snapping from IK to FK, it makes the evaluation work better and, uh, you know, it also will set appropriate auto key changes when you make those kinds of adjustments. So anyway, first thing to do, always set one big key on everything. Now from here, we have our main root control down here at the bottom, the global, and that's going to have, you know, just our, our main mover for the character. Don't forget that in your anim details over here on the right, you're going to find other hidden attributes for the different controls you have selected. So we have control visibility, which, you know, that'll turn off the visibility of all the different controls. So if you need that, there that is. We also have the tweaker controls. So you can see the little green ones popping up there and the hidden controls as well. So there are some additional hidden controls. So if you need to get those to show up, there's some things there. Then we have our cog, our center of gravity, our body control. That's the thing that's going to move them around. And, you know, we have all of our hands and feet by default set to IK controls. And so from here, I would just recommend playing with all the different controls and, you know, do some rig wrecking, do some testing, find out what all this stuff does. If you're trying to figure out, you know, what order to go in, use the anim outliner to your advantage. We've got your global, the local, the body, right? And then it goes to the spine and we all these different things. But if you grab the chest IK and you move them around, you can see that the feet and the hands are all in IK. They're locked in place. They're not moving around. Let's say you want to change that. Where does that live inside of this character? Uh, over here on the right, if I go to the left arm mid, which is this, uh, this middle control, right? If I go to the left arm mid, you'll see down here in the anim details some different attributes. For example, left arm IK solve. If I uncheck that, that will switch us to FK. And now the arm is coming along for the ride. So that's inside of the mid control for the arms. If I go back to mid, we have a bunch of other things as well. We've got stretch controls, softness, a bunch of different attributes. And there's a bunch of other things you should know about. For example, the left arm pull vector control lives here and there's different attributes inside of this to play with. Um, the IK hand control in general lives here. You can see that we have access to the FK controls, but they're not currently visible because I need to go back to the mid turn off IK, and now we see the FK controls. So now if I select them, you can see them here. So they're always going to be showing up here in the anim outliner, because just like an outliner, just lists your controls, but your visibility toggles will still live inside of the specific controls. And so if you're trying to grab all the finger controls, you could try to, you know, left click and drag, which, you know, you might end up grabbing extra stuff floating around. 
And so another method is to use this anim outliner. If I go to, for example, the thumb, the meta, the pinky, whatever, if I alt click on thumb, it'll grab everything inside of that section. So if I alt click on thumb, it'll grab everything in the thumb. If I alt click on meta, it'll actually grab all of the fingers because the hierarchy has the meta and then it has, you know, each of these inside as well. So I can say alt and shift on thumb and it'll add that to my selection. So it's kind of like a selection set to be able to just grab all of your finger controls really, really quickly. Same thing goes for the legs. If you want to switch the legs to FK instead of IK, you can come down to this mid control, where is uh, right there, left leg mid, and that's going to switch us to an FK uh, form of moving the leg as well. And then as far as the face controls, they are off by default, but the characters do have fully rigged faces, which is very exciting. If you select the head control, which is this main yellow one up at the top here, that's gonna give you control visibility and head dynamics visibility. So if I turn that on, you can see we have the hair controls essentially. And then control visibility turns on the face. And as far as the face goes, we have our jaw control down here at the bottom, this red one, that's gonna be a rotation control. So we can open the jaw with that. We have different lip shapers here as well. So if you wanna show more teeth, that's an option as well. And then we have this big mouth main control. And that is, I mean, it will move the mouth around, which can be very useful. You know, if you're trying to cheat the camera, do something there. But probably more importantly is, I'll hit G for game mode. If I come over here to the zipper controls, I can, I can turn on the zipper, which is a super cool and super essential set of controls for any face. So I can go ahead and just reset both of those. And we can go from there. Once again, if you are trying to mess with, you know, a bunch of these controls all at once, if you select something, you'll see it pop up over here on the right. That'll help you find things a lot quicker. So you can alt click, that'll grab all the eyelid controls, things like that. And that's a quick tour of the beta character. But what's really cool about this, let me just jump back to a standard empty world here, is I can go ahead and drop in that same beta modular rig. It's gonna set me up to do the exact same thing all of the different characters that they provided us here. So I'll go ahead and grab Delta rigs, pop her in as well. Because they were made with the modular system, you pretty much can have the same expectation for all these characters of where to find stuff. So if you understand how one works, you'll understand how they all work. I can go back to the head control to adjust the visibility of all these different facial controls, or I can go to the mid arm control to do IKFK solving, all that same stuff. So. Once you understand how one plays, you'll understand how they all work and you can pull them up in any file, whether it's the main level for the cinematic or just your own test shot. And it's great because this is one of the first sets of, you know, well-rigged, properly stylized facial control characters that we have access to inside of Unreal. So that's going to be probably one of the big draws for downloading these characters and playing with them. And so I hope these first couple of videos have been really helpful in understanding how the production files and how this the sample project are set up so you can kind of dig around, play with these assets and get comfortable. And in the next few classes, we're gonna go even deeper into the actual animation tools using this project as a base so that we have some data to mess with. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next classes.